Hello everyone, this is Seher from database.com, your best mentor. So in this video, we are going to do a comprehensive uh, review of oral pathology. As we know, it's a very important subject of exam, but very extensive at the same time. So it is very important for us to uh, do the important uh, must-read areas, high yield facts, and the most important conditions that are likely to be asked in the exam. So let us start with the first slide. Okay, so in oral pathology review, we are going to see, we can see the table of content here about developing a differential diagnosis, oral manifestation of systemic conditions, soft tissue cyst, bone pathology of the head and neck, benign malignant epithelial lesions, oral cancer, soft tissue neoplasm, odontogenic cyst and tumors, flavary gland pathology, benign epithelial neoplasm, and the viral conditions. Okay, so here we can see the leukemia and different types of leukemia, AML, CML, ALL, CLL. We know AML is the most deadly form of leukemia. ALL is a childhood leukemia, which is having the best prognosis. In CML, we have Philadelphia chromosome and CLL is the old age leukemia. Hodgkin, non-Hodgkin lymphoma. In the non-Hodgkin, we have the Burkitt lymphoma, the African, the American variety. So the main difference between Hodgkin and non-Hodgkin is the presence of reed stenworth cells histologically, which are only seen in Hodgkin, not in the non-Hodgkin. This is a Crohn's disease where we can see the cobblestone appearance and uh, fistula is formed in the alimentary tract. This is gingival hyperplasia, phenytoin, cyclosporine, nifedipine can create this gingival hyperplasia and pernicious anemia, deficiency of vitamin B12. So you will see painful burning tongue, glossitis, beefy rect tongue, and yellow tinged mucosa with the involvement of the nerves. That's very important sign of vitamin B12 deficiency. Now, the next slide is about the iron deficiency anemia. We know the plumber vincent disease is important. Chronic iron deficiency anemia with dysphagia in the females due to esophageal webbing. And oral signs of smooth red burning tongue, filiform papillae absent, and angular colitis. Sarcoidiosis, the most important is elevated serum ACE level and bilateral lymphadenopathy, sickle cell anemia, hair on end appearance. Very important, it's seen in thalassemia too. The genetic condition in which valine replaced for glutamate, sickle RBC are fragile, they break, they form clot, causing sickle cell pain crisis, infection, hypothermia and hypoxia. And this is your Pages disease. Osteitis deformans. A patient comes to the office with a hat that doesn't fit the head anymore or a max denture that has become loose, cotton wool appearance on the skull x-ray mm. and very important hybrid cementosis you can see on the periapical here. Okay, now in this condition, you, in this uh, slide, you can go through the dental amino cyst of the newborn, Abstein pearl and the bones nodule. Abstein pearl on the midline of heart palate, bones nodule at the junction of soft palate and heart palate. Amirogenase imperfect, that's a very important condition, right? So we have three varieties here. Hypoplastic, hypomaturation, and hypocalcified. Hypoplastic can be pitted or the non-pitted variety, which is smooth variety, in which the quantity of the enamel is affected. Hypomaturation, hypocalcified, the quality of the enamel is affected. So you have soft enamel here, easily chips of enamel. Hypermaturation also develops no capped incisal edges. That's an important point. You can see the pictures of it. Now you can see uh, both the pictures here. The one on the top is of tetracycline staining or banding, yellowish gray banding. The child is taking tetracycline in the age when the teeth are still getting calcified. So that is from the fetal age until age 8 he can get tetracycline staining because tetracycline binds with the calcium of the tooth structure to develop a metallic complex that stains your teeth. But after eight years of age, once all the permanent teeth are calcified, you can give tetracycline without any adverse effect of staining. The second picture here is of the fluorosis where we can see brownish white mottling. That's a term given for it here. So when you have higher than normal fluoride in the drinking water, it can develop fluorosis, which is actually the hypoplasia of the Enamel. Okay, so on this slide, we can see some of the conditions like cherubism. It's an autosomal dominant condition, most common in young boys, two to four years, where they have a bilaterally expanded jaws and they have a cherubic chubby look. Eyes are upturned towards, uh, upturned, giving it a heavenly gaze appearance. 
and radiographically you will see multiple unerupted teeth premature falling of primary and subsequent lack of eruption of permanent the treatment is just to observe the case now, Allard Dunlop syndrome, connective tissue uh, disorder, in which there is abnormal production of collagen, where the skin is hyperelastic, excessive ecchymosis there, unusual wound healing, paper like, papricious scarring. Marfan syndrome is another genetic disorder in which there is a defective cross linking of collagen, which is affecting the skeleton of the patient, the eyes, dislocated lens, heart, aortic aneurysm, hyperextensible joint, long and narrow skull. While cleidocranial dysplasia is an autosomal dominant condition again, where the sutures are not fusing or they are fusing very late. So the skull bones seems like they are floating, warmian bone appearance. And the shoulder bone clavicle is not fully developed. So they have a hypermobility of the shoulder along with small maxilla, give it a class 3 appearance, high arch palate, prolonged retention of primary teeth with severe malocclusion. Multiple unerupted supernumerary teeth are always seen here. Slide is there. Now let us talk about the abscess ulcer. So if they ask you what is the most common cause of abscess ulcer, actually answer is unknown. But however, there are some predisposing factors or the etiological factors, which could be genetic allergies, hormonal influence, nutritional imbalances, stress. So these are the predisposing factor for developing abscess ulcer. So there are three types, minor, major, herpetiform. Minor is a small size less than one centimeter heal without scarring within two weeks major larger than one centimeter heals in two to six weeks and always have a possible scarring herpetiform they also don't create the scar but there are multiple crops of ulcers together at one place that can be related to Bechet's disease or diabetes white sponges syndrome white rough surface lesion epithelial thickening look like a cheek bite appearance So you can see here smokeless tobacco keratosis that is snuff dipping or chewing. Leukoplakia as we know it's a very very important condition that can appear like a white patch and this is the definition of leukoplakia. It's a white patch of plaque that cannot be characterized clinically or pathologically as any other disease. And the most common site of leukoplakia is on the tongue, floor of the mouth and on the vermilion border of the lip. That are the sites also where you have most common the old cancer developing. You can see the picture of nicotine stomatitis here. It's a verrucous leukoplakia where we can see like a cauliflower like growth. There are many conditions that can appear like a white patch, lichen planus, smokeless tobacco, nicotine stomatitis, leukedema, white sponges, nevus, even the candidiasis. Leukoplakia never rubs off. Candle white patch can always rub off. Leukedema, when you stretch, it will disappear, but leukoplakia will not disappear. These are common tests that are being performed to diagnose between different conditions. Now, on this slide, you can see different signs of old cancer, the ulcer that doesn't heal, abnormal bleeding discharge, dysphagia, change in mole on the skin, persistent cough, pain, numbness. Predisposing factor, tobacco and alcohol are definitely the most important factor involved, which have a synergistic effect. And most of the oral cancers are squamous cell carcinoma. 90% of them. Okay, now on this slide, we can see the odontogenic cyst. Cyst is a fluid filled cavity lined with the epithelium. You know that. And apical periodontal cyst is a radicular cyst, most common odontogenic cyst. Non vital tooth is there. Pain, swelling, drainage, tooth mobility arise from her to capital root sheath. So, removing the radicular cyst. The extracting the tooth associated with it. If you don't do proper curettage, it can give rise to another cyst that is called as a residual cyst. Okay, so here we can see ameloblastoma. That's a very, very important tumor. It's the most common epithelial odontogenic tumor we have. Arise from remnants of dental lamina in third and fourth decade of life, mostly in the mandibular molar and the ramus area. It's a benign tumor, slowly expanding. Uh, the bone cortex can cause tooth displacement, mobility, and root resorption. There are different variants of meloblastoma in which the follicular pattern is definitely the most common we have. With ameloblastoma, we have very important wicker goldin criteria, which will help in diagnosing the ameloblastoma histologically. So it has the tall columnar cells, hypochromatic nucleus, palisading of nucleus, that means nucleus arranged parallel to each other, reverse polarity, nuclei is away from the basement membrane, and subnuclear vacuolization. 
Now, this is odontogenic tumor CEOT. Don't confuse with the Gordon cyst, which is calcifying epithelial odontogenic cyst. This is an odontogenic tumor. It arises from stratum intermedium, mostly in the mandibular premolar molar area, and you'll see calcification on the radiograph associated with unerupted teeth. And amyloid can be seen here. So now we can see some more condition here. This is called as denture sore mouth or denture stomatitis. So for several years, your patient is wearing an ill-fitting denture. It will lead to generalized chronic inflammation or local inflammation in the denture bearing mucosa. Inflammatory fibrous hypoplasia. We already discussed this condition, epulis fistratum. Then this is angular colitis, cracking at the angle of the mouth due to vitamin deficiency or due to close vertical dimension that can get infected by candida. This is a picture of the inflammatory papillary hyperplasia where the palate or the ridge are affected. Ill-fitting dentures is the common cause here. Hi my dear student who are preparing for IMBD ADAT a part 2 exam. Uh, thanks so much for watching this preview video of the subject. If you really liked it, please buy the full version by clicking on the link given in the description. With the purchase of every video, you will be getting free live assessment and evaluations on the subject as well. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the DentaBest channel now to get the latest updates on the smart videos. If you have any questions, please comment me in the box below. I, Dr. Seher from DentaVest, wishes you all the best for exam and thanks again for watching.